Here's another review from Three Days and Tres Noches. This time we are at the Excellence in Playa Mujeres, and it's the first time that we're staying at an Excellence property. So we're really excited to bring you the complete honest review of this resort. And if you're new to our channel, Three Days and Tres Noches brings you real honest to the point information about the travel destinations that we go to. So please like and subscribe and keep following us so we can keep bringing you reviews like this one. The Playa Mujeres is north of Cancun. It's about a 40 to 50 minute ride from the airport. Now we've stayed in Costa Mujeres before and really liked it. So we decided we really wanted to try the Playa Mujeres area as well. So let's get right into this review. I do also answer all comments and questions. So if there's anything specific that I don't go over, just drop them in the comments below. So let's start with transportation from the airport. The resort will set this up for you for an additional fee. However, if you follow us, you know we always use Nacho Tours. They are the safest and most reliable transportation company that we personally use in Cancun. So I will put their information in the description below if you wanna reach out to them directly. One more quick note about transportation. So right now in Cancun, they're doing a lot of construction on the main roads that's causing a lot of traffic and delays. So just keep that in mind when you're factoring in time, especially when you're leaving the resort and going back to the airport. So I'm gonna give the check-in a nine out of 10. Overall, it was a great experience. It was really quick. Actually, one of the best experiences that we've had in the check-in process. So right when we pulled up, they greeted us right away with warm towels and champagne, which is always a great touch. Now we upgraded to the Excellence Club, so I'm gonna talk about that more at the end of this video. Um, so they took us right upstairs to the club level check-in. So I think we got lucky when we arrived. We arrived around two o'clock because nobody was in the check-in area except for us, um, I think in one other couple. So they were able to process us right away. I think the whole process only took 15 to 20 minutes and our rooms were ready, which I think was a first for us. The club level also has a premium bar, so they made us some margaritas while we were waiting. And again, it was just a really good first impression overall. A couple really quick additional notes about the check-in. One is they do not have bracelets at this resort, which I prefer, but that meant we had to keep track of key cards because they do not have the mobile key on the app. Also, they require a $600 room deposit for incidentals on your credit card, which is the largest one we've ever had to put down, so just take note of that. So now let's go to the room. I am so excited to show you our room. The rooms are definitely a nine out of 10. We are in 7455. Hi. So I'm going to show you we have an oceanfront, two-story plunge pool suite. So let's take a look at this amazing room. Come on. So immediately to the left is the room service hutch. And I love when resorts have this because this is where you're gonna put all of your dirty dishes from room service. And instead of putting it outside, that sometimes can attract animals and also they can come get it without having to come into the room. Now the bathroom was laid out exactly like I love a resort bathroom, except that it did not have a partition from the bathroom to the bedroom, which I don't know why resorts do that. I think all couples still like their privacy and there's just a lack of privacy when they don't have that. But regardless, it had the separate toilet, it had the double sinks, and it had an amazing rainfall shower. The shower was amazing, I have to say. It had a huge rainfall shower head, biggest I think I've ever seen. Um, again, it does have that window there, so there is a little lack of privacy. They did have a ton of toiletries stocked in the room as well for you. Um, they even had toothpaste. So they did have a small walk-in closet over here to the right. They had extra blankets, they had the robes, the safe, and they did have a steamer. Now they did not have an iron, so they only had a steamer. However, we did meet an employee that was walking around with um, dry cleaning, and he said they will iron and they also dry clean for an extra fee. I did love the layout of this room, even though there was that little lack of privacy from the bathroom to the bedroom. I loved um, the layout and the bed was super comfortable. Of course, they had the bar area and we had the premium upgrade, which came with uh, four bottles of full size alcohol. Actually, I think five bottles and a few bottles of wine.
They had a nice little Nespresso machine, they had teas, they had snacks, and they had a fully stocked um, refrigerator. So they had beers, they had wine, sodas, and they even filled it with what we like. So we took out some of the sodas and the beer because we don't drink that, and they stocked it up with seltzer water um, and regular water for us. Now we rarely watch TV when we are on vacation, but they did have a nice large TV, although it was a little bit far from the bedroom area. So if you like to lay in bed and watch TV, it's a little bit on the other side of the room. They had champagne waiting for us and they had this huge seating area. And I love the fact that it was leather because lots of times these areas, they get humid. So if you open up the door and if you had cloth um, sofas, it tends to get a little bit damp. Now I loved that they put the jacuzzi tub here in the corner with these curtains so you could have privacy, you could close the curtains off, you could open them up, and they even had this window right there so you could open this up fully so you could feel the air coming in, take a bath, and look at that view. So it was really amazing and it filled up very quickly. We had no issues with that. The water was nice and hot. So this was um, really, I would have to say, a huge plus in this room. Okay, another thing I loved in the room, I know I'm spending a lot of time in the room but was this little seating area that you could have room service in inside the room now we've been to other resorts where there's really no place to have room service there was tons of places you could sit down they even had that little desk area as well so this is the first floor outdoor seating area so if you're going to do room service it's great they also have this little um, bed seating area but i wanted you to note that this is what they consider ocean front so we did um, upgrade to a club level ocean front room um, we did end up switching though because we did not feel that this was oceanfront so we asked for a room closer to the ocean which we got a little bit closer so I'm going to show you that but just take note that this is what they consider oceanfront so you might as well maybe just even get an ocean view room it may, might not be that different. But there's a hole upstairs to this room so we got to check that out so let's go I'm excited to show you. I couldn't believe the size of this um, upper level area. It was huge. And you have just this huge, huge expansive view. Again, I'm gonna show you the other rooms view that we went to so you can see kind of the difference because they were both considered ocean front. But just the whole area was, I think one of the largest of any two story room that we've ever seen. So one little note is that it is starting to show a little bit of wear and tear. In fact, the door um, was very difficult. We actually I actually cut my finger on the door. That was difficult to open at times, um, but it was clean and it was just, again, like immense. I use the plunge pool every single morning. It is cold. It's a very cold um, pool, but super refreshing in the morning. And then even in the afternoon when it's really, really hot. It even had its own little outdoor shower, as you can see there as well. So overall, I was completely blown away with this space. I could not believe how huge it was. Now, it does lack a little bit of privacy, so you are obviously next to other people with the same suites, but I never heard anybody or never saw anybody, but I guess the potential is definitely there. Okay, so here's the view when we moved over to building eight. So previously we were in building seven, and this is the view, and I felt that this definitely qualified more as an ocean front suite. So just keep that in mind. You may want to ask for building eight since it's closer to the ocean. To say one downside though, moving to this building, is that we were right next to the area where they dump the seaweed in the morning. So literally starting at 4.45 in the morning, they had the trucks cleaning the seaweed off the beach, which again, I get that they want the beach experience to be um, great, but it seemed a little early. And so I guess you're gonna have to decide whether you wanna be closer to the beach or if you don't mind being a little bit further away so you're not next to that area. I preferred the view personally, but again, that's something to consider when you're booking your room. Okay, off to the beach, and we're actually separating this into two categories. So the first one is the staff and the service on the beach was absolutely a 10 out of 10. We upgraded to the club level, so we had that special area on the beach. I guess they call it the VIP area. So I don't know if that's why we got special service, but it really was top-notch. You could get food, you could get drinks right there while you're sitting 
on the beach and they came around constantly and just making sure that you had everything that you needed. There was plenty of lounge chair seating, but if you're someone who likes cabanas, they only had five cabanas and you didn't have to pay extra for them, but they were usually taken by 7 a.m. in the morning because that's all that they had. So that was one little thing that I would say was a negative. Now the beach itself was also really beautiful, but not necessarily maybe a 10 out of 10 like the service. They are still experiencing some seagrass in this area. So the first day it was pretty clear, but then the next two days it came in a little bit, but again, nothing close to what we've experienced up in Riv Riviera Maya. But I love the fact that it was so close to the pool, so it was very accessible. And if you're someone who loves to take long walks on the beach, you're gonna love it because it is very walkable as well. So one of my favorite things was that you could see Isla Mujeres literally from your beach chair. And they actually had speed boats and different boats that would take you right from the beach over to Isla Mujeres. So definitely recommend that because you don't have to go on a bus, you know, to a port, they take you right there. Now we did a sail trip. I'm gonna do an entire video on this from the port that's literally right next door to this uh, resort. I also love the privacy part of it. So although I love the beaches in the hotel zone, I love the fact that all of the other resorts are very spread apart so you do have that privacy factor also there weren't a lot of vendors which was great too now off to the pools i know this is a little bit of a lengthy review but i'm trying to give you all the details possible so you can make the decision whether you think this resort is right for you and the pools are definitely a nine out of ten so it had that lazy river layout, which I'm not really a fan of. Those connect to the swim out suites. But then they did have a central entertainment pool with a nice swim up bar. So they had those quiet pools if you wanted just to relax and you wanted some more quiet, but then they had the entertainment pool. And in terms of seating, they did have plenty of seating, except around the entertainment pool. Um, it lacked um, a little bit of seating. We had trouble finding chairs one day. And the service around the pool was excellent as well. You never wanted for a drink. And they did have very close by food options, but they would also deliver you food too while you were sitting by the pool. It was also very clean. You always saw people cleaning the pools. There were lots of people cleaning all around the resort. And they actually had hot tubs, which you don't see now in some of the newer resorts. I'm not sure if it's a liability or what the issue is there, um, but they had really nice hot tubs as well. Now it's time for the food and drinks. We're giving the food a seven out of 10. So let's start with the positives. Um, we love the locations of some of the restaurants. They had a restaurant right on the beach. Um, it's really a beach grill called Las Olas. So it was typical bar and grill food like burgers, nachos, pizzas, fries, those types of things that you could have while overlooking the beach. They had two restaurants that had an ocean view as well, which was the Lobster House and the Grill. That's something we really look for when we're looking for a resort and not all resorts have it. Another positive was it was very easy to find food at all times. So they had restaurants scattered throughout the resort. They had 24 hour room service and they even have a sports bar with late night snacks. I also love their little coffee spot called Aroma. So it had um, grab and go juices and sandwiches and their coffee was really, really good. Now the lines do get a little long in the morning, which is typical at a resort. Everyone wants coffee. And the only other thing I would say is it closed at 10 and we often eat late. So that's where they had the ice cream and stuff. So by the time we wanted it, it was usually closed. And again, as I mentioned, they had 24 hour room service that was available to everyone. You did not need to upgrade to get that. And also they had a really good breakfast buffet for some of the things we didn't like. Um, I would say the overall food quality was about average. And I don't know if this is a really fair review of the food because we were only there for three nights. So we didn't get to all of the different restaurants. And I am gonna do a whole separate video about the food and drinks that I have a little bit more detail in it. But overall, I would say the only good um, meal we had in the evening was at the Lobster House. So we also ate at the French, which we really didn't enjoy that much, and the Italian, which um, we had one good dish and the other dish was just kind of okay. And the lunches were pretty good too, but I would say the biggest miss at this resort is they do not have a traditional lunch buffet. So they have that little grill and bar that I mentioned right on the beach, but they don't have a big lunch buffet. And for me, that again was a huge miss because that's usually the biggest meal that I eat. I look forward to a nice big lunch buffet, and then I don't care as much if the restaurants at night aren't the best. 
Now again, these are just my personal preferences. So I don't like to take time away from the pool or the beach to go have a sit down lunch. Now they will come serve you at the pool or the beach like I mentioned, but it's bar food. So it's wings, it's burgers, it's fries, it's pizza, that kind of thing. And again, my personal preference is a big lunch buffet where I can have a salad, you know, some light protein, things like that. So overall, our food experience was average. Now the service was excellent. That's one thing I have to say was the, the service around the restaurants was really, really good. Um, but I might not come back to this resort just because it didn't have that big lunch buffet. Now the drinks, which are the most important part, were definitely a 10 out of 10. So they had bars everywhere and the bartenders were very skilled and experienced and we hardly ever had to wait very long for a drink. They also had an amazing selection of high-end liquor, even if you didn't upgrade to the club level like we did. But since we did upgrade, we were able to get Patron, Don Julio, they even had um, Grey Goose. Now, like I said, make sure you watch out for that more detailed video I'm gonna do about the food and the drinks. But I have to say, this is one of the best experiences that we've ever had when it comes to bars, the service, the bartenders, the selection of um, liquor at any resort. And now for the activities, and I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. There is always something going on or something to do at this resort. So definitely download the app because they list all of the activities that are going on every single day and where they are located. Um, I forgot to mention too, in the food section, um, you're also gonna use the app to order food from. That's where they have all the menus. So they don't have any paper menus. So non-motorized water sports were included with your stay, but they had a ton of different things that you could add on or pay for, like jet skis and parasailing. And then in the lobby on the first floor, they have an area where you can book excursions as well. So we did go to Isla Mujeres one day, but we did it separately, which I'm gonna do a whole other video about. Now their spa is currently under renovation, so they do not have a spa on site. However, they are booking appointments at Beloved Next Door. When we tried though, they were all booked. So on site, they do have a fitness center. It's a little bit on the smaller side and it's located in the back of the resort. It was a little tough to find at first next to the sports bar. And then in the lobby, they do have shops. We loved the gift shop, um, one of our favorite gift shops at any resort because they had a lot of unique items. Um, so we bought a bunch of things for gifts to bring home. And at night, they always had some type of party going on. So the first night we were there, it was a neon night, which was a lot of fun. We actually met some subscribers from Chile. So these are our friends from Chile, hola. And then um, the next night, they had a um, Mexican party and karaoke. And then the last night, they had a silent party. I also love that they had all the parties outdoors in the main square. So they were not held in a nightclub, which I prefer. And finally, a lot of people want to know if they should upgrade to the Excellence Club like we did. So with the upgrade, one of the first things you get is access to all the club level areas. So that includes the club level on the beach. Also, they have a separate pool and bar off to the side. And then on the third floor, they have an uh, Excellence Club lounge and separate restaurant as well. So we stayed for three nights and the additional cost to upgrade, I think was around between $800 to $1,000 for the entire three nights. Now, one of the reasons why we upgraded was because of the locations of the club level room. So in order to get an oceanfront room, you had to upgrade to the club level. Now, when we first booked this hotel, this resort, there was not any availability for club level. It was all sold out. So that's why I was calling so much. I had mentioned that earlier to see if there were any cancellations. And we happened to be able to get two rooms. They did have cancellations so we could get that oceanfront spot. However, if you remember back in the room section, you will see that it really wasn't oceanfront. You're really not like right, right there. So I would say I was a little disappointed by that. So it also includes access to that restaurant on the third floor and they have breakfast, lunch and dinner there. We did try the breakfast and it was it was good, but I would have rather just gone and eaten right by um, with the ocean view. So I didn't find that a reason to upgrade. However, that little area at the beach and the service at the beach in the club level was literally among the best service we've ever received. And of course, having that premium liquor selection really made the stay that much better as well. And the bartenders on the third floor club level are amazing. Uh, they made some of the best margaritas I think I've ever had. 
With that being said, I found having that club lounge on the third level very inconvenient. So anytime that you wanted to go, you really had to go out of your way to the third floor to go to the bar or um, to sit in the lounge. Also, part of the upgrade was supposed to include hydrotherapy, but their spa was completely under renovation. So instead, they gave us a 20 minute massage, which definitely was worth it. It was right on the beach. So that definitely made up for not being able to do the hydrotherapy. Also, the fact that they only had five cabanas at the club level, I thought was not enough because you could tell people were annoyed because they had to get up at 7 a.m. just to reserve them. So I personally thought it was worth the upgrade. However, if you were on a budget and you really can't spend the extra $800 to $1,000, you're gonna have an amazing stay at this resort without upgrading. So some final thoughts on this resort. Now, would we return? I would definitely come back to this resort. The only one huge, huge miss, I would say, was the fact that they did not have a larger lunch buffet. Also, this was the most expensive resort that we had been to for three nights. So we paid almost $2,900 for two people for three nights, which included the upgrade. But because of that, I definitely felt like there was a little bit of a higher end vibe there, which sometimes is nice when you're going to resort because you just want to relax. You don't have to worry about like a bunch of teenagers or college kids, or whatever being around. However, since it was on the higher end of cost, I would have expected the food to be a little bit better. Again, we were only there for three nights, so maybe we didn't give it a fair review. Um, and I'm also comparing it probably to the Grand Moon Palace, which we just came from. However, the layout was perfect. It was the exact layout that I love at a resort, which is easy to navigate, it's walkable. They had restaurants on the beach and the beach was right next to the pool. Um, so that alone, I just loved. I also love that they did not try to sell you a membership the entire time that they were there. So their focus is totally on service and it shows because it was definitely some of the best service we've ever gotten at any resort. Another thing I loved about this resort was that Isla Mujeres was right there. So you could get in a boat right from the beach and they could take you to Isla Mujeres. Now it was an extra cost, um, but that way sometimes if the beach conditions aren't that great, you could just get in a speedboat and go over to um, Playa Norte, which is one of the most famous beaches in the world. It is showing a little wear and tear, but not enough where it's not gonna make you wanna go back. In fact, it kinda adds to the island vibe, I think, to the resort. I would definitely recommend this resort. Now, if you're on a budget, again, it is on the higher end of any of the resorts that we've been to. And I'm really curious to see how it's going to stack up against LeBlanc, which I'm going to in a few months, which the price is just about similar to this one. So I hope you found our review of the excellence in Playa Mujeres helpful. I do answer all comments and questions. So if you do have any questions or comments, or maybe you've been there and you wanna to add to this review, just go ahead and leave them below and I do respond. And definitely check out some of the shorter, more detailed videos that I'm gonna do on this resort coming soon. And definitely subscribe and keep following us at Three Days and Trace Noches while we keep bringing you honest, to the point information about the travel destinations that we go to and show you that you don't need a whole week to have an amazing vacation. Three Days, Tres Noches!